Rabbi Loeb, to me, in many ways, kind of a larger-than-life personality. Uh, not only a big man physically, but uh, intellectually, spiritually, just the kind of person that could fill up a space um, and, uh, and, and did very often, very often did. For 35 years, that space was Bethel. Rabbi Mark Loeb came to Baltimore in 1976 as the assistant rabbi to Rabbi Agus. Well, Rabbi Loeb was similar to Agus in some ways in that he was an intellectual, but he had a much more of a human common touch to him. And he was able to reach out to people and, and really create the Bethel that we know now. He came um, really at a, at a transitional moment in the congregation's history. And it was under his guidance that the congregation grew from a modest sized congregation to one of the larger congregations in the country, almost doubling in size in the course of his time here. I think he wanted to make Bethel the kind of place that was open, was welcoming to people, so that people um, could feel very comfortable here, open, welcoming to interfaith families, um, to the gay community. So all, it was just important to him that Bethel would be the kind of place that anyone who was concerned about being Jewish could come and feel comfortable immediately. Rabbi Loeb's influence extended far beyond Baltimore. He was board president of Mazon, a founding board member for the Institute for Christian and Jewish Studies, and served on gubernatorial commissions on discrimination and adolescent pregnancy. He was motivated, I think, by a love of humanity. I can't say it any, any different than that. He loved people, even if not individual people, he loved the idea of humanity, and he was just the kindest, most wonderful person in the world. Rabbi Loeb is also remembered for his great sense of humor, his colorful personality, and his love of opera. When I first met Rabbi Loeb, and he picked me up at the airport in his Crown Vic, he always drove a Crown Vic, and he had opera playing on the radio. I believe it was Verdi's Don Carlo that we were listening to. So he actually called my wife on the phone, uh, on his cell phone, which in 97 was not something a lot of people had in their cars. And then uh, we talked to her over the phone. We were listening to the opera together and chatting. It was a really wonderful experience, a much different from any uh, interview I'd ever had with a rabbi for a, for a position before. It wouldn't be uncommon for him to pound his fist on the table at a staff meeting and say, that is the dumbest idea I've ever heard, <laughs> you know? But, um, but he also was that guy. He was that person who you didn't need to be perfect for. When a rabbi serves a congregation for as long as Rabbi Loeb served Bethel, and you're talking about three decades, um, that, that rabbi has a deep, and I think very profound impact on the life of the congregants that he interacts with over the years. And, and people just feel very proud and like this is a, an honor that's well deserved. For all of us, he is a Hall of Famer. I, I hope that he watches over us and feels proud of what we've become and uh, what we've created from the extraordinary foundation that he gifted to us. See.